Hi, this is American Perspective with Patriot Mom 007. Today we're here with Jerome Davison, and he's a friend of mine, I, I'd like to say, casual friend of mine, but hopefully a better friend soon in the future. So I've been following Jerome for a while. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. I'm happy to be here. Thank we're going to share some great stuff today. Yeah, so you've been doing some great things. So I met Jerome a few months ago, several actually. We were at uh, a church revival in Mesa and uh, he took some time to spend talking with me and I just kind of, little mini fell in love crush, I'm just gonna say it. He's <laughs> so personable, charismatic, the, it might be the, N the NFL player, he's just kind of a bold person and he draws you in, he drew me in. So I've been following his campaign, he's not in my district, he's actually on the other side of town from me, but I do follow along and how is your campaign going? Excellent, uh, we just dropped and hit the world with a wonderful ad that uh, has got the whole world talking. Tempe, Mesa, Awatuki and Chandler, I want you to be excited because you're gonna have a candidate who is representing you I will not turn my back on you. I want to represent you every three months. I'm going to come back and we're going to get together. It's going to be very exciting. But the campaign is going very well. The campaign is very exciting. We're getting all types of volunteers. We're getting volunteers from ASU. We're getting the churches involved. It's just, we're having a lot of fun. That's and right. that's the type of atmosphere I want to set for my campaign. And I want to set that for my district. We've got to get rid of all of this division and start having fun. I'm going to bring this district together. I guarantee you. So your ad, I saw it when it came out a couple of weeks ago or a week and a half or so. I put it up. They took it down. Who was they? Which one? You know, all of them. All of those people. All <laughs> okay. those people out there Every who decide platform. what I get to put up and what I don't get to put up as if they own me and my thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it might be back up. I know uh, Brandon Tatum had yep. it up. But yep. I wrote to him and I'm like, how did you get it to get the commercial to stay up? Right. Um, so if you haven't seen it, it illustrates uh, a lot of the issues today uh, about the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. which Jerome is a proponent of, as I am too. And it is pretty hard hitting. It involves uh, hooded Klan members <laughs> coming to his home. <coughs> And not as if that never happened, not maybe at his personal home, but it has happened, so it's pretty factually based. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it's far stretch. Right, it wasn't a stretch at all. But they have said. But what we did, what brought the controversy to this ad was that I had the Democrat logo on the chest and on the hat. It had the donkey, the jackass was on there. And, uh, and I said, if you were being attacked by 12 angry Democrats, and man, that just blew up. That was like, that hit everybody in a hard way. And it hit a lot of people and it knocked them into reality. Most young people, most young black people in this country did not know that the KKK was, uh, uh, was founded by the Democrat Party. And it was founded to stop right. black people from voting and arming themselves. And yeah. so, but here's the deal. The president said that in a recent, uh, about maybe two weeks ago, he said that the, the greatest threat that America is facing, y'all remember? White supremacy. I that's what I'm a I black wrote. man. I'm living. I'm black in America right now. You understand me? Right. Yes. But so you got me. You got me shook up. So I got to go get myself an AR. Arm yourself. That's right. You, you said the that's white right. supremacy is the big problem. So then the Democrats are attacking me, but it puts them in a in a major conundrum. And this was one of the most. I think what makes it so popular is that it's uh, a lot of wisdom went into it. A lot of thought went into it because uh, it just it's just shocking. Right. Yeah. And I actually wrote that. So when I posted your commercial, um, I actually wrote right off the bat, hey, we heard from Christopher Ray, mm -hmm. Alejandro Mayorkas, of course, Joe Biden, and uh, Millie, actually General Millie, they all came out over the last six months and said what the number one issue what threat in say? America is, is white, white supremacy. supremacy. There you we know have what they it. said yesterday? What? It's global warming now. Oh! I'm just saying it came I out I made yesterday. him change the narrative. So, That's yeah. how powerful Jerome <laughs> Davis is. They were like, boom, it's white, it's white supremacy's <laughs> you know? not a problem anymore. Oh. As of yesterday, <laughs> they all stood at the podium, including Jake Sullivan, and uh -huh. said, yeah, it's a global warming issue. Uh -huh. White supremacy did not come out of his mouth. Okay. So apparently we're past that. Okay. But thank heavens you have your weapons just in oh, case. Oh, yes. I mean, there, yeah, sometimes they're wrong about things. They could be wrong about that. I think, actually, true, this is serious. So uh, white supremacy groups mm -hmm. are flourishing in America, yeah. as they are uh, other types of groups around the world. We are not the only people with a KKK type environment in, in cities around our country. So that's a real thing. We see hate crimes all the time. Mm -hmm. We see uh, destruction of buildings. We see people getting harmed for <clears throat> their race yeah. of all types, right? Mm -hmm. So being armed and being prepared 
for anything that or anything else, yeah. God knows what will happen with what they're doing, is a very important issue. And you have a family to protect. Yes, and I, I have four daughters. Your, yeah, four daughters. I have four beautiful daughters. Wow. I walked two of them down the aisle in marriage. You're talking about, my chest is already big, but when I, on that day, <laughs> right. I was walking tall, baby. I was, I was so proud of my beautiful daughters. Man. I bet those are some and two great more to go. Weddings. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. It's just wonderful. And the two you know. that are still uh, with you, in the, are they in the house still? One, well, my baby girl. She, who shares the same birthday as me, September 16th. Mm. She just got accepted, uh, she's got a full ride a scholarship, uh, college scholarship yeah. in volleyball. Okay. She is so athletic. She, when she Wonderful. jumps, her feet are like so high. I was like, like where did she get wow, that from? That's great, where is she gonna go to college? Uh, she's going to go to college either to ASU or somewhere down in LA, probably like uh, mm -hmm. USC. And she's still in the house? Yes. And then your second daughter, not married, she's out of the house? Yes. And she's working? Is yes, she? she's working. She's I ask in a relationship. you because we know the candidate bullet points, and we're going to get to those. Oh, yeah. But you know what? You want to get to know me personally well, and share? Well, I think people want to get to know other people personally and yeah. not just vote randomly by right. the door knocker. Right, right. I mean, as a voting person, I would appreciate that. So that's kind of what I try to bring. I knocked on a thousand know? doors. Wow. I knock, personally, I knocked on a thousand well, you doors. you beat me because I knocked on the I money. used to be your color. Then I started knocking doors. <laughs> Wait, and I then know, this is what tan. happened to me. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. I know. I'm like always AC. messing with people. <laughs> we need to be in the AC out here in, oh. in Arizona. We can't be in the sun all the time. We will yep. melt. So, no, honestly. But I did knock that many doors, though. I knocked quite a few great. doors. And I made How's a lot reception? of personal calls. Just people, in your in your neighborhood, in your area. Well, see, I people started to know me already prior to me running my campaign because I was always at the uh, the election integrity rallies. I was at the very first one at the Tabulation Center. Oh. I led the opening prayer there. It was the people was broken hearted, of course, right? Because the election was you know went through what yes. it went through, and people were hurting. We were all disappointed, and when they gave me the mic, they said, "Jerome, hey, can you come and do the prayer?" Because if people know me as a person of yes. prayer and a pastor and yes. stuff like that, I got on that mic and gave them that old Baptist black kind of preaching and prayer, man, and, and people was crying and 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 feeling more you know comfort. They love that. I, it was a blessing. So you were a pastor as well mm -hmm. in your previous as well. I'm as currently a pastor. I'm, Are you practicing? Yeah. Do you preach still? Yes. You have a congregation? Yes. Oh well, gosh, where's that? Uh, North Phoenix, uh, the House of Judah. Where? How far north Phoenix? Uh, Sunny Slope. Okay, that's Fifth and Hatcher. I live on Carefree Highway, like that's North oh, Phoenix. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like central, but okay. Yeah. Just in case anybody wants to find you, hear you. Yeah. I mean, oh. you are very. I mean, honestly, just in conversation, mm -hmm. and I'm not. I mean, yes, you're my guest. I'm not Come really on. like. Hey, pour, pour it out there. Give the people. You're very like inspirational. You're just your voice. The mm -hmm. way you present your words out loud, or just whatever right. you're saying, right. it's very strong and Thank powerful you. to Thank me. You. Thank this you. This is yeah. my, in my opinion. Thank you. So, um, mm -hmm. speaking of historic um, things for you as a pastor, you've been doing that. You were yeah. also. I know people want to hear about the NFL side. Yeah. The Raiders. The Raiders. Former NFL Raiders player, mm -hmm. which gives you your strength, I'm sure, and stamina yeah. for mm -hmm. something like this in right. a campaign. Well, I started at ASU. I had a full ride scholarship to ASU. I was a high school dropout. I dropped out of high school in Mississippi, born and raised in the South. And I talked about that in one of the uh, one of my interviews because I was saying that sometimes in the South, in Mississippi, the KKK would be threatening to come down through the community, right? And so everybody would just streets would just be totally cleared. But we, we'd, be, we'd be in our house too, but I had guns. My father had guns in the house and that made me feel safe. But I, I dropped out because my parents went through a divorce. I really just psychologically, I just couldn't think in school. I couldn't focus. Right. And so I dropped out and then I moved to California with my mother's sister. And I went to a junior college and took an aptitude test, passed it. Went into a junior college, uh, graduated in two years, became an All-American and a Hall of Famer at that junior college wow. from breaking all the football records. Amazing. And then I got a full ride scholarship to Arizona State. That's great. Yeah. So your message to any of the youth that might be checking us out later on YouTube is stay in school. Stay in school. Or at least finish school at some point. There's going to be some things that happen in your life that's going to discombobulate you. It's going to confuse you. You probably may go through some, some confusion, some emotional stuff. But I'm going to tell you something. Life isn't over at that point. And you can get up and try again because in this country, in America, America affords you a second chance, a third chance, a seventh chance. You can get up and become something great.
That's right. Yeah. So I'm in so college I'm, right now. I don't know if you know. I'm in third year criminal justice studies. Okay. I go to NAU next year to finish wow. my fourth year. Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Thank beautiful. you. It took me, you know, 30 years after school to get into school. Yeah. But yeah, I know. I think it's very valuable. I, I encourage my kids to do it, and hopefully they will take mm. that route as well. So applause for that because that is... You know, I'm currently in school too. Oh, you are. I'm going to finish my my master's in theology and get oh. my doctorate. Wow. So right now I'm studying and running a campaign. Okay, so I know how hard that is because I back it's, in summer classes they just started brutal. my justice class and, and yeah. I, I was up till three writing. My an professors essay are tomorrow. yelling at me every day. They yeah. I, they're yelling at me on the like, <laughs> like Jerome. I need that assignment right now. Yes, like, I know. Yeah. I actually usually am working. I will be working probably till two o'clock, finishing my essay yeah. tomorrow as well, my weekly. Yes, yeah. so that's very impressive because yeah. the campaign trail is brutal. And then my preaching assignments too at my church. My preaching Bible study. You know, I'm, wow. but I'm not the senior pastor there. I'm I'm the assistant pastor. Sure. But she, my pastor, needs me to do assignments from time to time, yeah. and you know I have to fulfill that and uh, and still do run a great the greatest campaign in America. So those who wonder how good a job Jerome will do for them in uh, Congressional District Four. Mm -hmm. All they have to do is really hear what he does on a regular day uh, with schooling, his pastorship, and, and the campaign, and the door knocking, and realize that this guy has a lot of get up and go, a lot of drive, more than probably most of us, or many of us for sure. So whatever he does in his regular life, mm -hmm. that's the candidates you want to see in the offices, not the people who've been in office who say they're doing a lot of stuff, but then they've been in office and they're still not doing anything. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just a easy way to gauge I think yeah. um, going forward America is so tired of politicians we're yes. tired of it I mean we're that's just right. sick of it and that's, I think that's one of the driving factors that made me say you know what I'm sick of all the just I'm sick of it and so I'm gonna get in here and I'm gonna talk regular on these platforms I'm gonna talk like an everyday American right. I'm not gonna speak with polished words and all of the big words I'm gonna talk regular and let people know that I am on their level and as a pastor for close to 30 years, I have been close to the people. And like David did when he was in the Bible, he was so close to the sheep, he had sheep poop between his shoes. And, and that's it, when you, want, when you start to smell like the people and think like the people and talk like the people, the people could say, hey, this person represents me. I've been there for the birth of their children, to bless their homes, bless their businesses, therefore conducting their beautiful weddings and also to pronounce ashes and ashes over their loved ones when, when it's time to go leave this world. So there's so many aspects that, uh, that I have know about people. A family counseling, marriage counseling, divorce, hard things, traumatic things in, the, in families. I know that people have confided in me things they wouldn't confide, confide in anybody else. So really, and so I think I'm like the support. perfect representative. And yes. you've been giving support in all ways for a long length of time. That's what you do for a living. That's right. And it really spiritually, it's not just a living. It, right. It's something that you believe mm -hmm. in. Right. Um, so I was a team chaplain when I was with the Raiders. Oh, you were. Al Davis made me a team chaplain. He made Back Al Davis the team. We could pray team. on field, and there was no yeah. issue with that. No, no, uh, exactly. I mean, now you see what I'm saying. That at yeah. that time we could pray and all this kind of stuff Back and not be attacked. Norm, our normal days. I'm gonna tell you who made that hard. Uh, Tim Tebow. He made that hard. He made it a thing. You know why? Really? Because Tim Tebow was very devout in his faith. You yes. have, you see them football players like Deion Sanders that go out and point yep. up to the sky yep. and then go to the club that night. Right. Well, th Tim Tebow was a virgin. He was a very yes. handsome guy, built and is, strong yes. and, and all that kind of stuff. And he was a virgin and he was devout to God. And when the cameras focused on him, he was very sincere about that. America don't want no sincere faith. Right. Like, get up from there. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't you ever call on God in front of America. That's yeah? right. And that's they, right. They were upset. And so he was a good player. He was good enough to play NFL, but they didn't like him doing the, the devout religious stuff. Right. They liked the phony stuff like Deion Sanders and all these different people. Or Kaepernick to, kneeling, the opposite of the faith, which is, that's okay. See, in my time, like we, we kneeled for God. We stood for the flag. I, I know. And yeah. I love our flag. 